Dimension of Chaos was released in November 2015. This set introduced the Magispectors, a series of pendulum monsters that cannot be targeted or destroyed by opponents' card effects. Notable cards in this set include Performage Plush Fire, Gamma Seal, the Sea Turtle Kaiju, Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon, Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend, and a card that would take a TCG exclusive archetype to Tier 1 contention, Cosmo Dark Destroyer. In this series, both Nim Nim and myself will be opening 24 booster packs or one box of a core Yu-Gi-Oh booster set. We will build a deck and play a best two out of three, and the winner will receive a small prize to upgrade their deck. However, in each episode, we will open another box of the next set that was released moving in chronological order, constantly upgrading our decks before dueling each other at the end of each episode. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series. You know, if there was a way for Gage to lose the last episode of the progression series, that was very fitting. Uh, that was a very Gage thing to do. But I hope you guys enjoyed the last episode. It was quite entertaining. And we're back in the winner's circle. So we're just going to go ahead and spin, see what we get. We've got a lot to cover this episode. And I'm hoping we can get the tournament packs. There's some pretty good stuff to pull in there. And uh, looks like we're getting them. So the reason why this Astral Pack in particular is very important is because the ultimate rares are actually insane. Fiendish Chain is an ultimate rare. Gage and I each have one copy of this, but getting another copy would be pretty nice. But Mystical Space Typhoon is also an ultimate rare. Obviously, ultimate rares are the rarest as it possibly gets, but we did get two spell shattering arrows in the last episode, so it's possible. And if we can do that again and get two Mystical Space Typhoons, I'll be feeling pretty happy about that. So three packs of Astral Pack 8. Let's go ahead and flip them up. <laughs> of course. Of course, we get the Fiendish Chain. Uh, you know, I'll take it. I would have liked Mystical Space Typhoon. I'm not going to lie. Safe Zone's also an interesting card. This was like an ultra rare previously, but this is maybe playable in our format too. Let's go ahead and add that to the collection. And let's go ahead and go on to our second pack here. See what we get. You got it. No fucking way. There's no way. How? How? Everyone's going to think this is fake. Every, everyone's going to think this is fake, especially because I got two spell shattering arrow last time. Editor, if you're watching this, don't cut like this entire thing. This is all one segment. Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. Gage is going to shit when he sees this. Mystical Space Typhoon. Generic spell and trap removal. And we have one copy of it. That is unreal. We're going to add that to the collection. Let's go ahead and do our final pack. There's no way this will be an ultimate rare. Okay, Book of Eclipse is pretty good, but I think we got those in common in their original set. So I think we should have play sets of this. The other two cards are kind of whatever. But before we hand it over to Gage, we do have to talk about the one and only Painful Choice. A lot of you guys have discussed that next to Magical Scientist, Painful Choice has probably decided the most games. And Gage and I talked it over, and we think we agree with you. So joining the ban list or the Hall of Fame for the progression series, whichever way you want to look at it, Painful Choice will no longer be played moving forward. I think we have demonstrated how broken this card is plenty of times, and so I think people are going to be pretty relieved to see this one go. So let's go ahead and hand on over to Gage so he can tell you all about Dimension of Chaos. Boys and girls, welcome back to the Loser Circle. It is I, your host, the gatekeeper, Nim Nim. I am guarding this Loser Circle with my life, bro. Don't worry, got another plan cooking up today. I feel like it's a good one. I feel like we can really take a dub today. I say that every episode, but this time for sure, I think we got a really good plan. Dimension of Chaos released November 6, 2015, baby. Oh man, I remember this set like it was yesterday. Precursing that of Breakers of Shadows, one of the most meta impactful sets of all time. This set is also very good, giving us a whole bunch of cards that would be necessary for that big push in the next set. Alex gets a little support with Fluffle Wings at the top here. Another great Fluffle card if he wants to stick to his Shadal strategy. Plush Fire is a very banned common card that paired really well with Luster Pendulum back in the day. You can pop Plush Fire with Luster Pendulum, Special Summon a Perform Mage, and then get another Plush Fire to hand, complete some scales, do some silly stuff. It was pretty good. Vector is necessary to play with Luster Pendulum if we want to do something with Draco Face Off later down in the line, which uh, that's not in this set. It's one of the later ones coming down the line. But also look at all these, dude. Magispectors. Magispectors get released here Kieran being one of the most broken pendulum monsters in the game I don't think this card could come back I wish 
but I don't think it can. I think this card's way too good. A couple of them are locked behind uh, higher rarity slots, but you have Yada and Kyube, which is Spell and Trap Searcher, respectfully. Bumbuku grabs monsters, and Nekamata also grabs monsters during the end phase. Well, any card during the end phase. And then Kirin is the one that you bounce it back to hand, and you can bounce anything back to hand. In fact, it's a pendulum monster. Just keep summoning it out. Keep bouncing things back. It was a hell of a card back then. Aside from a whole bunch of Magispector cards, some other stuff we got was like Blazing Mirror Force as the Mirror Force of the set. Uh, coming after Storming Mirror Force, it wasn't that good. Blazing's never seen play, I don't think, except in like Burn Strats. Uh, Storming has just always been better. And then Grand Horn of Heaven was actually a pretty cool common card. During your opponent's main phase, when they would special summon a monster, negate the summon if you do destroy it, and then end the main phase one. The opponent draws a card, but hey, you ended their main phase one. That's pretty huge. And then some more Cosmos. We were a little spooked of Cosmos last episode, uh, but the only pilot that is easily accepted accessible to get, and Alex didn't get any pilots, by the way, is Wicked Witch. Probably the only one we would have to worry about is Wicked Witch. Straw Man is an ultra rare, uh, taking the place of, like, Farm Girl, that's another card that's gonna be difficult to get, and then the ships in this set are super and secret rare. They are not rares. Dark Destroyer is insane, but it is a secret rare. And also, Alex doesn't have any Farm Girl, I don't have Farm Girl either, there's no reliable way to search these Cosmo ships. More Kaijus, Gamma Seal Radian, uh, two of the better ones coming out in this set here, and then some DD cards, which nobody really cares about. That's Dimension of Chaos. I'm excited to crack it open, but first we gotta open our pity pack today. And that is one pack of moving on to Astral Pack 8. You guys know Astral Pack 8 is like pretty nuts, right? It's got like Trishula and MST in it. Fien <laughs> Fiendish Chain is one of those ultimate rares, but it is Fiendish Chain. We already got a Fiendish Chain, but this is our second one. You know what? I'll take it. That's pretty good. Not bad. You know, it's an Astral Pack. We'll take it. And then we got 24 packs Dimension of Chaos, baby. Let's see what we pulled today. All right, you guys. So already a very exciting episode, but we still have 24 packs of Dimension of Chaos to open. Let's go ahead and flip them up. I'm really excited to see what we get. Oh, well, maybe not if this is what we're going to be getting. More Ignites are nice for the Pendulum strategy. Uh, Magic Specters are in this set, but some of the better ones are higher rarity, so I'm not sure how viable this is, although Kirin could be a difference maker. Mirror Conductor is also pretty good, and I think Plush Fire is in this set as well. Overall, not a terrible pack. One of the reasons why Gage and I actually think Magic Specter is a slightly viable strategy is because the Counter Trap, Magic Specter Tempest, is actually a common, and this card, when a monster will be special summoned or a monster effect is activated, Tribute a Wind Spellcaster negate the summoner activation and if you do destroy that card that's pretty good and not to mention yada can actually search that but i believe that's a common too so if you get enough of the magic specters and the fact that you can search this counter trap that's not bad a couple of interesting cards in this pack there is a yada we do need those if we do want to play magic specter uh fluffle wings is in this set actually we do have a decent fluffle core we could like fuse with shadals and wings is really good because it allows you to get a ton of advantage very quickly and gradle eagle is also also in this set. The Gradles are actually very interesting in like a sealed sort of environment and Eagle being able to just steal Gage's monsters. This card might actually be playable. Dimension of Chaos, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Let's see what we get in 24 packs. The only thing I'm looking for is actually Despot 06. If that reveals anything that I'm playing today, it should. Gamma Seal, Gateway to Chaos, pretty good opening pack there, you know, I'll definitely take the Gamma Seal, it's a super rare gateway, but it's completely worthless, don't plan on playing those Black Lusters. Whoa, Magic Specter Cat, Nekomata, that's pretty sick actually, and a Despot 06 in the pack, nice to see. Nekomata's cool, it's a super rare that during the end phase, it scarms for any Magic Specter card. If we could get Bumbuku and Kirin, that'd be absolutely nuts, still no Kirin to point out yet though. Speaking of Kirin, there he is bro, Kirin is an awesome card to pull there, Yada in the pack. Wow, Kali Yuga, bro. <laughs> I'm not gonna play Kali Yuga, dude. Super rare Kali Yuga. As cool as it is, man, don't think I'll be playing that fella. Another Nekomata. Whoa, okay. Things are coming up with that. That's pretty good. All right, Magic Specters. I see you. I see you. We got a couple Cubase and Yada so far. But we got to get one of the big dogs. We got a Kirin. I need to get a Bumbuku. That'd be crack. Okay, here we go. This is what I've been waiting for. Six packs in. Still no hollows yet. But there's our first copy of Cosmo Wicked Witch. This might be, aside from the fact that this helps facilitate our Cosmo strategy, because our Cosmo pool is pretty good, Wicked Witch by itself is actually an insane card. The reason for that is because you can pay a thousand life points. This can't be destroyed by battle or card effects, and it's a 1900 attack body. This is worth playing, even if you don't play Cosmos in some instances, and uh, I'm definitely looking to get three of this. You know, I think we've used all of our luck in the uh, Astro Pack opening. We're eight packs in, haven't gotten a single hollow yet. There's our third Wicked Witch, though, and uh, there's a Sphere Karibo. This card is a uh, dual link staple, I believe, or is it Speed Duel? I don't remember, but I know this card's good in that form. 
format. Neat card. I don't know if we'll play it, but it's at least playable. Well, there's our first holo, and it is one of the rarest cards in the set. Being a ghost rare, it's Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. This card's actually really good. It's a generic level 8, 3,000 attack, and has a very strong effect. We do have to be playing cards that facilitate synchros to be able to play it, but I'm not too upset about this. It is a little bit conditional, but it's a pretty nice pickup. One of the better ghost rares for sure. Okay, finally, there's a copy of Magispector Unicorn Kieran. I was really hoping to get some of these because that would facilitate wanting to play Pendulum just all the more because this card is banned for a reason. This card is so oppressive and annoying to deal with. I need to see how the Magispector core is looking, but we definitely need Kieran's for sure. Okay, this isn't bad. There's a Gamma Seal. We actually got a Radian in an earlier pack. I just kind of skipped over it, but getting the Kaijus too. I'm pretty happy about that, especially considering Gamma Seal is the strongest of the bunch. Strongest as in he's the weakest, so I can hit over him. That is not the ultra rare I wanted. This stupid black. Yeah, give it to Alex, bro. I don't want those black wing cards, man. Worthless, dude. No plans to play those black wings. Get him out of here. Oh, and a super rare back to back with beginning night. Yep. That doesn't do anything for me. Oh, oh, there is the ghost rare Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend, baby. Hell of a guy there, dude. He's pretty okay. Board wipe, not bad. Deal some burn damage, not bad. Take it. We're down to three packs, so I think I've only got one deck Spock 06, which is kind of depressing. It's a common. There's two. Two more packs here. Can we get lucky in the close here? Let's see what we can clean up with. Nothing in that pack. One last pack. Anything good? Anything good? Straw man. All right, interesting enough. That's pretty good. I got the 306s looking through it. I got the jet. Two Nekomatas, I got the Cubase, and a Strawman, which I don't think I'm going to do anything with Strawman. But hey, no, that's a pretty good start. Double Nekomata's not bad. I'm, I'm happy with this. Let's add it to the collection. Damn, we're like two-thirds of the way through the opening, and I've only gotten like that hollow, and I don't think anything else at this point. That's a little bit unlucky, but we've already been extraordinarily lucky this episode, so I guess I can't really complain. Okay, second copy of Kieran. Really happy to see that. I think two Kieran is the absolute minimum I want to work with here. It's going to get banned at some point, so we're only going to be able to play one eventually, but two is very nice to see. Okay, I don't know if I broke the pack opener because I swear, unless I missed something, I only got that Scarlight Ghost Rare and I've gotten rares the other 20 packs that I've opened. Only a few packs left, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what we get. Oh, there's a super rare, of course, when I preface it that way. DDD Duo Don King Kali Yuga. Very good card, but requires us to be in rank eights, which we aren't. But very, very strong card. Also is generic, so we could play it in the future. I didn't see how many Deskbot 006s I got. I need to double check that too, but I think I've seen a few of them. Next pack though, anything else good? Third Kirin. Okay, okay. That looks pretty good for the pendulum pulls. Not going to complain there. Opening the last couple packs here. Not Nothing too great in that one. I think a lot of duplicates. And our last pack, what can we get? A fourth Kieran, of course. All right. So the Dimension of Chaos pack opening wasn't amazing. We did get a Ghost Rare, and we got a playset of Kieran. We got a playset of uh, Wicked Witch as well. That's kind of the bare minimum I was hoping for. But, oh man, if we pulled like a Dark Destroyer, could you have imagined? That would have been crazy. We have a lot of work to do in the deck building department, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get to building. All right, boys and girls. Today, we are putting on a clinic with desk bots, baby. I hope you got your homemade built IKEA desks ready to go because we're going to accessorize it with some of these bad boys dude these cards are absolutely insane and as you can see in front of me this was the episode i was waiting for to actually pilot this deck because we finally got the second pendulum scale into us with despot 06 as you can see this deck it doesn't fuck around we literally got the entire build all together it looks threatening a deck that focuses on abusing a card like machine duplication in tandem with a card like 002 or really any of the other despots because they're all targets for machine duplication we're able to get absurd advantage make some insane synchro plays and just make some big fucking dudes using our card pool to the fullest end we have a cards like limit reverse and oasis which are perfect call of the haunted cards for all of our despots limit reverse because all of them are under a thousand attack which is pretty fucking nuts if we get the uh, pendulum of monsters into the graveyard through the effect of 004 we're able to limit reverse them back and then use them as popping on alex's turn which isn't too bad and then reasoning is literally just a free extender in this deck because no matter what alex calls two is probably the best choice so i don't get the special summon search but literally there's all so many levels it's almost guaranteed to hit also we get to play some broken earth cards to tie in maxi glow up bulb redox is absolutely bonkers and then machine of fortress is probably just the best card in this deck this deck looks fucking threatening, let me tell you. It's gonna be silly. And our 
side deck here, we only have the one Gamma Steel that we managed to pull. Powerhouse cards, but if we're knowing we're going first, like Royal Oppression, Dust Shoot, Vanity's Emptiness, Confi. Uh, Creature Swap is insane, unless Alex is playing the Mirror Match for some goddamn reason. We give him a Despot that is literally 500 attack. We can take anything on his side of the field. Sport in the second Fiendish Chain, we ended up pulling in the Astral Pack today. Not the ulti we really wanted, but it is the one we got. And then we also got Royal Command and the Triple Shadow Imprisoning, if Alex really wants to go back to Dolls again this episode. We don't have to deal with a card like Painful Choice that's going to absolutely shit on my day. However, I do think with Fluffle Wings, it's going to be a pretty hard thing to want to pass up. The extra deck is extremely tight in this deck, actually. There's a lot of options we can make. We got our Instant Fusion targets in the form of Cybersaurus and Kawanala because they're Earths to work with Redox. Uh, Synchros, we got Black Rose, one copy of Jet, one Leo, the Scarlet, Red Dragon, Archfiend, and Stardust Dragon. Kind of want to play Scrap Dragon in place of the Scarlet, but hey, we got to give Scarlet a try. We got it today, so we want to, I want to at least see if it works out. And then XYZs, we've got Arc Rebellion, Gaia to slap on top of anything, Gauntlet Launcher, Ragna Zero, Crimson Shadow Armor Ninja, Utopia Beyond, Dark Mist if we're going to Machine Dupe our 002 and don't have anything else to go into, just make this. It's not that big of a deal. It's pretty difficult to get over unless you have Ragna Zero. And then Shark Fortress if we're going to be pushing through for some major big boy damage. Through testing, this deck, almost all the hands were nuts. We're going to be opting to go first to be able to get set up turn one, and then turn two just be able to clean it up with a whole bunch of extenders and uh, just really powerful cards. Let's see if Alex has got a strategy that's going to beat this man. I was feeling confident with this in testing, so we'll give it a shot. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we pulled three copies of Magispector Unicorn Kieran, so I think we have to give it a test drive. This is the deck we are bringing to today's duel, and this just looks fierce. This is the first Pendulum deck entering the progression series unless Gage did one too, because I put his segment before mine typically. So maybe he has the first one, but if not, this is the first one. And this deck is just going to steamroll him. I cannot wait to see his face when he sees that we're playing this, because this deck is just going to be an absolute nightmare. We are playing Ignites. We're aiming to go second and actually just OTK him because we are playing by Master Rule 3 technically. We'll explain that in when we get into the actual gameplay. But let's go ahead and do the card by card. First up is Denko Seka. As soon as it hits the field, all set spell and traps are offline. So we can do our Ignite shenanigans and hopefully OTK. Three copies of QB. So QB was in here initially because I was main decking Magispect or Tempest, but when I tested with this deck, it's just better to get more and more of the Ignites because that's how you're actually going to kill him. So I actually sided the Tempest for when I know he's going to make me go first, which he probably will once he sees what we're doing. So QB's nice because it fetches it. It's also 1500 attack, so it's not bad. And it's level four, which can matter for dipping into our Xyz pool to give us some more options for our card selection. We also have the three Kira, and this is going to be the heart and soul of the deck because if we need to play any bit defensively, Kieran is just going to be an absolute disaster for him to deal with. And we do have three of it, even if it is a hard once per turn. We have the one max C. We are going second. So if we draw this, we're just going to get more cards, which is fantastic. And then we have the Ignites. Two Cavalier, one Crusader, three Gallant, three Paladin, three Squire, and three Veteran. So all of the Ignites have an effect where if you have another Ignite in the other Pendulum Zone, you blow up both of them and then add a Fire Warrior from deck to hand, which all of these cards are. This fuels up the extra monster zone to be able to pendulum summon them all back out. So we want to open a hand of like four or five Ignites because then we can just pendulum summon them all back. And that is what we are aiming to do. The Kirin and the QB are also good because they're low scales and they don't restrict you from your ability to be able to pendulum summon other archetypes. So they fit very naturally into this deck. And we're also playing a Sea Dragoons of Draconia and a Sky Dragoons of Draconia. And the only reason reason for this is because these are high scales. The pendulum effects are actually kind of okay. They allow you to like special summon a normal monster from your hand, which we're playing a million of, and then like pop a card on the field. But we're primarily playing them because they're extra high scales and we're lacking in the high scale department because I think the hollow ignites actually are the higher scaled ones. So our scale numbers are a bit imbalanced. And so I want to just have these as a little bit of extra precaution. At the very least, they're still pendulum monsters. So we can either just go into the extra deck and uh, now, Sky Dragoons of Draconia is 2200 attack, so it's going to be a lot of damage regardless. That does it for the monsters. For the spells, three chicken game. We saw Gage play this last time, but I think I have a better reason to be playing it. Dark Hole, Heavy Storm, three Ignition Phoenix. This is the field spell for the Ignites, and all Ignite monsters gain 300 attack and defense. And once per turn, this is a soft once per turn, you can target an Ignite card you control, destroy it, and then add an Ignite card from deck to hand. So it effectively replaces the Ignite, but since it goes to the extra monster, monster zone, you're then able to basically get a plus one because if you're going to pendulum summon it back anyway, it doesn't really matter. And since it's a soft once per turn, if we have multiple copies of it, we can play it multiple times and just load up our extra deck for absolutely free, 
which is why I wanted to max out on this in addition to terraforming. This also does break chicken game if I don't want Gage playing it as well. So there's just a lot of reasons why this card is very good. One instant fusion, I could play more of this, but there was times where I was testing where I would just get clogged with this card and I would just rather it be another Ignite. So I'm just playing the one just to give us some extra deck diversity. The Pot of Greed, the Regeki, the Snatch Steel, and then the three terraforming. For the extra deck, we've got the Carbonola Warrior. Mavilus is in here as well. QB is a win, so this actually allows us to go into Lightning Chidori because you need two level four wins to do it. So I figure if it comes up, that's not too terrible. I'm also playing the Panzer Dragon as a level five instant fusion target just to allow us to get into our rank four, rank five pool a little bit easier. We have Blade Armor Ninja making a return. Uh, these guys are warriors, so that's pretty convenient. If I make a Blade Armor Ninja with two Ignite Paladins, I actually gain an extra 1600 damage off of that. So it is worth it for me to exceed. And I'm playing Carbonola Warrior because it's an instant fusion warrior. So then I only need one of it. And that way we can get a ton of damage in and also convert the instant fusion into damage because the monster usually can't attack. Chronomaly Crystal Chrononauts in here because we do have some level threes in the deck. And so this allows us to turn them into something if we absolutely have to. Gaga Gaga Cowboy to go for game. Gaia Dragons in here. If we need something that's just a bit larger, our attack stack kind of caps out at like 2400. And so we could like overlay two gallants or two veterans for like a Pilgrim Reaper, which I'm only playing this in here just as a stepping stone to get to Gaia Dragon if we absolutely have to. I hope that never has to come up. We do have some removal too. So I mean, maybe it won't even matter. We do have Levier as another rank three target, and this can actually get cards back that are banished. So that could be relevant. Lightning Chidori, Ragna Zero, Masquerade, the Papal Operative, the Pilgrim Reaper, and the Shark Fortress for damage. Although I don't know if this is going to be useful because two Cavaliers equal 4,800 damage anyway. I guess this and a Panzer Dragon would be much better. And then for the side deck, two DD Crow in case he's stolen any graveyard shenanigans, the Mystical Space Typhoon paired with two copies of Twister, two Smashing Ground for anything that just might be too large. If he goes back to like Dragon Rulers or something, that might be a little bit problematic. We are main decking Raigeki and Dark Hole, but some more removal might be nice. Two Wavering Eyes. This is kind of a hedge against if he is on Pendulum, but this is also good in our deck because this is basically an Ignite effect in a spell, so there is some value to that. But I figured every time I wanted Wavering Eyes, Chicken Game is just better because I just want to get an extra card to hopefully just be enough to be able to kill him, so that's why we're going with this. And then we have a trap lineup for if he makes us go first. So we have the one Tempest we can search with the QB that can act as a way to destroy or negate the summon of a monster. Torrential can just blow up the field. I don't care if I lose my field because I can just Pendulum Summon it all back. Three copies of Tyrant Throws. This card is hilarious. It's a continuous trap. Tribute two normal monsters to activate this. Neither player can normal or special summon effect monsters. As you can see, we're playing a ton of non-effect monsters in this deck. And so if I flip this turn one and Gage has no way to answer it, I probably just win the game. And then of course the one Vanity's Emptiness just because it's Vanity's Emptiness. I cannot wait to see Gage's face when we bring this to the table. It's going to be an exciting one, ladies and gentlemen, but let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. Gage, I hope you are ready for some chaos this episode because I am going to take this to another dimension, my friend. Welcome to the dimension of chaos duel. How you doing, buddy? I can't wait I'm for great, this one. I'm great, bud. I feel like so we're fun. on I feel like we're on the same wavelength, dude. I knew exactly that was the pun you were going to use when you opened this episode. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way, there's nothing else he can think of. So I, I read it correctly. So let's hopefully... Do you have something better? Do you do have I something have to... better? I don't, actually, because that's what I was going to say, okay. too, if you let me open. Okay. So... <laughs> fair, fair. You should just, like, predict at the end of your deck building. You should be like, Simo is going to say blah, blah, blah. I, I think that'd be kind of funny. I could 100%. A lot of good playable cards in this set, though. Uh, I would say maybe not necessarily as good as Clash of Rebellion, but it's still a pretty good set overall, I would say. Oh, How it, are you feeling? It's a solid set. And then uh, this is actually the precursor to one of the biggest sets of all time, and that's Breakers of Shadows yeah. next. That's a scary set. So uh, I feel like right around the corner, these last few sets, they've been banging. They get lots of cards. I've been, been able to switch it up. Breakers of Shadows is interesting though because not to deviate away from the match at hand but i i feel like breakers of shadows is really good for constructed but i don't for our format i'm not sure if it's going to be that good maybe i don't remember like i, I guess twin twisters in there that's pretty good there's a few <laughs> good things in there you might want to take another yeah. look over it but let's not let's not spoil that let's leave it for next okay week. fair 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 i mean you're going to be the one reading it off when i kick your ass again today, but, you know, <laughs> oh, okay we'll see, bro. We'll see. <laughs> all right you ready buddy i'm ready dude let's do all right let's go ahead and shout out our patron it is astrid caballero thank Thank you so much for the support. Oh, okay. You're gonna play this game? Fine by me. 
Let's go. Damn That's it. the first one I've won in a minute, I think, dude. Yeah, like, it's holy shit. I, it's because I used the die. That was the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I went back to using the die since I found them recently, and uh, yeah, it didn't pan out too well. All right. What are you going to pick, buddy? I'm going to pick to go first still, dude. I still feel like okay. it's the right move. That sounds good to me. Good luck. Can't wait to see what you brought today. Good luck, Duelist. Let's see how you do. Stand by main. I'll start my turn by activating reasoning. Oh, God. Well, yeah, now that you have no idea, literally pick any level, bud. It's not going to matter. I don't. I, okay, okay, okay. Let, let's rewind. I don't think that I have no idea. I have a, I have a hunch. I have a hunch. A hunch? That you might be on Infernoid. Okay. I could be wrong, but there's very few decks that reasoning is that good in. You and I have been talking about how Infernoid is something that is semi-playable. And maybe I'm wrong. Like, I could just be completely off on this. The problem is, I don't even think you... Did you even pull Decatron? Because if you didn't, then I don't even know if this is that good. Because I could call one... That's usually what you call. But then you just mill your whole decks. But I don't even know if you got Decatron. I guess you'd have to be playing other stuff unless you're just literally playing like one card and then you just like drop it on me. I don't think you pulled Decatron. So I actually just think I'm gonna take a safe pick here. I think I'm just gonna call four. All right, that's a respectable choice. Uh, you know what? Yeah. I'm okay with that. Let's see. Twist. Okay, Twister main deck. Lance is gone. Happy to see it. Desk, Desk bots. Yes, sir. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm going to pick okay. up that 003. No problem. And the thing is, he only triggers on normal summon, which is a little upsetting. But, you know, that's okay. Sure. I'm just going to leave it there, though, with a Desk Bot 3. That's okay. I'm all right. You... <laughs> I'm feeling okay. Don't laugh at me. You laugh at me, bro. You're going to get clobbered. Let me see what you can do. Uh, We will see if that is the case. How do we want to do this? Let's go ahead and party, shall we? Let's see what we can do. All right, I am going to activate Ignite Gallant in my left pendulum scale. Oh, baby, bro, the pendulums. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, all right, Ignite's cool. Uh, I will then activate Cavalier in my right scale. Sure, no problem. So I'm going to go ahead and clarify this now. You and I talked about this before, but since Dueling Book doesn't necessarily have like a Master Rule 3 setup currently, we're going to be doing the Master Rule 5 layout, but we're playing by Master Rule 3 where you don't need Link Summons and you can just go Correct. crazy. Yeah. Just so that way we're clear. So basically the only th downside here is that you can't set five, mm -hmm. but if you're playing Pendulum, you're never really going to set five anyway. Yeah, so yeah. Gage and I discussed that that's that's how we we're going to do things. Okay. I'm going to use the effect of uh, Gallant and I'm going to pop both of my Ignites to add a Fire Warrior to my hand. Sure. No problem. All right. So let's go ahead and move them to the extra deck and let's add ourselves a, where is it? Uh, Cavalier. We're going to go ahead and activate a Cavalier. Sure. And we're going to activate a Paladin. And we're going to use the effect again to add another Ignite. Sure. We're going to add a Veteran to our hand. Okay. Then I'm going to scale Magispector Fox QB. <laughs> yep. And Ignite Veteran. Yep. And perform the Progression Series First Pendulum Summit. <laughs> yep. That's okay. So we're going to go for Cavalier, Paladin... Cavalier, Gallant, and I'm also going to bring out the QB that is in my hand in addition to all that. Sure, that's fine. Uh, then I think we will just proceed to the battle phase here. Sure, okay. So this desk bot can gain 500 attack and defense for each desk bot card currently that you control. You only control one, so I guess we will go ahead and hit with the Paladin. Sure. And then I will hit you for 15... 21, 24, and 24. Am I just dead? Oh, bro, no! <laughs> 2K, dude! No! no the one thing worked. I didn't want it to worked. happen. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, I gotta see what my next draw was. <laughs> All right, game two, real quick. That's fine. Damn, Alex. You're on it, bro. I, you, oh, man, dude. I expected those Ignites to do something. I didn't expect to get OTK'd with the very first Pendulum Summon of the Progression Series. That's fucking crazy, man. Oh, I mean, that's, that's what's happening when we're playing MR3 rules. And, uh, yeah, Pendulum Summoning, I think it took maybe to this point for me to feel confident. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll discuss why that is later. You might have a hunch after seeing some of the cards that I'm playing, mm -hmm. but... 
I, I don't know. I just didn't feel like any other point up until now was good enough. Mm -hmm. But now I feel pretty confident. So what are you going to pick, buddy? First, second? What are you feeling? I'm going to pick to go second this time because I don't think you okay. can do much going first. So I'm going to see what you're capable okay. of. All right. Well, good luck, buddy. Good luck, Let's Dorst. see. Now I have a bit of an issue here because... I have a couple ways I can do things. I could just like wall up or I have a few other things I could do, but it's kind of iffy. All right, we'll start with a terraforming. Sure. All right, let's go ahead and dig for a copy of Ignition Phoenix. Yep. And this is a pretty good field spell. Maybe not like by regular Yu-Gi-Oh standards, but in our format, I think this card's actually pretty good. So I'm gonna activate the Ignition Phoenix. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and scale the uh, Gallant here. And sure. we're gonna use the effect to pop the Gallant and add another Ignite card to our yeah, hand. Yeah, that's perfectly okay. I think I'm gonna grab a Veteran okay. off of that Phoenix. Then I'm going to go ahead and scale two Veterans. Okay. And I'm gonna use the effects, okay. pop them. Oh, whoops. Make sure he goes to the uh, extra deck. And we'll grab another Ignite. This time we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves, we'll grab ourselves a Cavalier. Sure. Then we will go ahead and I think we're gonna scale both of our Ignites. And then I'm just gonna pen summon for three. Okay. So we'll bring out two Veterans and a Gallant. I think I'm pretty content with that. Go ahead, buddy. Sounds like a plan to me, dude. I'll draw. Stand by me. It's not fantastic, but it's a, it's a bit of a wall for you to at least have to get through. All right. Make the decision again, my friend. Reasoning. Okay. So now you're playing desk bots. I, I don't know like what the correct level is to guess against these things. Answer me this. Are the desk bots, do their levels equal the number that they are? Yes, they do. <laughs> There's okay. A, there's a level one I, through six. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So basically, I have like zero chance of getting. Yeah. This correct, yeah. It's it's saying. very difficult. You just gotta hedge your bets. You know what? I'll call three. Three. You played three last time off reasoning. Let's see if you get it. Again. Sure. Whoops. That's gonna go to grave. Four, baby. That's I a good called one. Four. Should have called four. <laughs> four one is a hell of a card to pick up, too. I'm happy with the four. Okay, so Mr. Four is joining us on the board here. You got anything? No, you're good. All right, cool. Love to see it. I'm going to activate Pot of Greed. That's pretty good. Yep. Draw two. Oh, my. That's pretty fucking okay. That's pretty all right. I'm going to activate Machine Duplication. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. With Machine Duplication, I'm going to be able to summon both of my fours from the deck. If only I called four this game, too. <laughs> if only, bro. If only. Oh, you want to know my favorite thing, Alex? Oh, four's not once per turn, either. All right. Well, yeah. Oh, oh, four's kind of insane. We'll go battle phase. Let's start picking this apart. I'll go oh, oh, four into your veteran, and I'm going to trigger oh, oh, four. So you get to send a desk bot. It gains 500 attack and defense times the level. Uh, and since I have Phoenix up, my veteran actually has 3,000 defense. So mm -hmm. you have to send six here. I do. And six will be going to grave. Okay. So my veteran is down. Yes. I'll attack with 004 again. This time I'll go into your gallant. Okay. So now this time you could send a five if you'd like. Yes, I'm going to trigger and I am going to send a five. Whoops. Not the hand. He's no longer very gallant. He is no longer that gallant. Uh, and then I'm actually going to trigger this 004 on this. And I'm okay. going to... Okay, and so this... It's specials from grave or hand. I'm going to spam okay. a five from hand, and I'm going to summon a, uh, a two from hand. Okay. And then I'm going to trigger two and one. <laughs> and five, sorry. I'm going to trigger... <laughs> There's so many numbers, bro. I'm going to trigger two and five now. So two I'm going to be able to add to hand, and five I'm going to be able to pop one of your spells or traps. Okay, sure. So what are you going to pop with the five? I'm going to pop your uh, Cavalier. Okay, so Cavalier's down. Whoops, go to the uh, extra deck. Not used to doing that, obviously. Yeah, right. And, and uh, you get to search for your two. Yeah, go I ahead. get to search. So I am going to pick up a... Three. Just gonna add the three to hand here. Uh, nice little follow up for our next turn. Yeah, no, not bad. Uh, and then oh four, I'm gonna go into your uh, veteran there, and I'm gonna activate the effect. Send another six, I'm guessing. Yes, sir. And then sounds good. Uh, you can't take damage for the rest of the turn, but I will go main. Thankfully, two. yeah, no problem. Jesus <laughs> Christ, yeah. <laughs> I'll exceed these two into Ragna Zero. Pretty okay against your deck there. That's pretty good. Yep. Uh, and then I have yet to normal summon either, which is pretty cool. That's um, true. You've summoned what, like nine monsters and haven't normal yeah, summoned yet? Yeah, it's been pretty good. crazy. I'll normal summon yeah, glow up bulb. Oh, even better. Fantastic. Definitely. Sure. <laughs> it's above average, dude. It's okay. <laughs> Trish me. Uh, oh, dude, I wish, dude. Oh my God. Could you imagine if I had Trish? Trish was an ulti in this astral pack. Yeah, right. So it's oh, possible. Man, I wish. Yeah. I wish I was that lucky. Uh, I am going to synchro for 10. This is going to go to extra act. Oh, jeez. And then these are going to go to grave. And I am going 
Ready to summon Leo? Mr. Leo. Okay. He's pretty good. Right. Can't target him except during my main phase too. Yeah, he's big he too. He is big. He's just big for no reason. I'm oh my god, dude. <laughs> I I am going to set a card. Eh, let's make it two. And sure. uh, I'm feeling pretty good with this still. All right, go ahead, dude. Your turn. Seemed all right. Yeah, it's, you it's know, above, it's seemed all right. You know, not bad. All right, we'll draw. Got anything in the standby for me? No, you're okay. Go to main one. All right. How the hell are we going to deal with this now? <laughs> so I know the card in your hand is a three. Correct. Because you added it off of the two. Okay. So at least I know a little bit. All right. I'm going to start by snatch stealing your Ragna Zero. That's fine. You can take it. Okay, makes me feel a little bit better. Uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and scale up this gallant that I okay. top decked. Thinking. I bet you thinking here for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, to be fair, if you pop the other scale, I, I wouldn't be able to do this. So. On resolution, I'm going to activate limit reverse. Okay. I'm going to target 005 in my graveyard. Ooh. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, I'm going to summon 005, and then I'm going to activate 005. I am going to pop your gallon. Not too happy about that, I'll be honest. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and chain Ragna Zero here. Okay, thinking. I'm going to pop your 005, or target your 005. So the thing that sucks is I think this is going to have to be okay. That fine? <sighs> yes, that is, that's okay. That'll resolve. Okay. So chain resolves, five gets destroyed, I get to draw a card, and then Gallant gets sent to the extra deck. Correct. And then uh, since it was destroyed, reverse goes to grave too. Unfortunately, that may just be the extent of my turn. It's not too pretty, but I think I am gonna have to pass hey, it over. That Go feels ahead, pretty buddy. good to me. Well, during your end phase, I'm gonna activate another limit reverse. I'm gonna target 006. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Mr. 006 pops monsters when he's summoned, so I'm gonna pop my own Ragnar okay. Zero. Yeah, that's pretty good, unfortunately. Won't be able to get the effect off of that Ragna Zero again. It was looking to get another card draw, but it is what it is. Go ahead, buddy. I'll draw for turn. Stand by main. You already know I have it. I'm going to summon our 003 here, big guy. He's pretty okay. Uh, He's pretty okay. Yep, I'll use his effect, and I don't have 001, so I'm gonna pull out that 001 and attack here. That's what I really wanted the Ragna Zero for. I'm pretty fine. sure you're just dead here, because I'll throw this in attack. I'll okay. go battle phase, and I'll poke you for 31. Okay. All my machines gain 500 because of Despot 02. So this is going to be okay. 2,000 to the dome with 006. He's getting another 1,000 from the two in my extra deck. Oh, sure. Okay, so he's 2K. Yeah. And then, dude, you're just 100% dead. <laughs> uh, yeah. 500 attack for each Despot you control. So this guy is like fucking 2,500. And then this is just... Yep, play. he's actually 3K. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's just it. it. You got it. Wow. Those Despots, the reverse man. OTK. Yeah, we got... We got reverse we, OTK. We both the same kind of strat, dude. This is interesting. I like this. <laughs> Gage, I gotta admit, that was uh, that was pretty impressive. I mean, I OTK you the first game, you didn't OTK me as fast in the second game, but it did eventually happen, and that was kind of scary, to be honest. Yeah, pulled and out some sick guys no. along the way, too, you know what? I yeah. took out my greatest IKEA desk, dude, and I furnished the hell out of it with those bots, <laughs> man. I was feeling good about I, it. This is weird now, too, because like we both know what the other person's playing, and I feel like there's a bit of mind games that could go on here, and uh, to start that off, I think I'm actually gonna go first. I don't know about this, All right, but I do have a plan All if right. it comes to fruition. Well, we'll see if it works out for you, bud. Good luck. Okay, you as well. And uh, I'm kind of regretting this already. I'm a, I uh, love to hear it, baby! Let's Give start with your win. with your favorite card, Chicken oh, Game. Oh, shit, the game! Okay, game's okay, yep. So we're gonna pay a thousand, we're gonna draw a card. Yep. Uh, well, I guess it be like that sometimes. So how are we going to do this? A few things we could do. I'll be honest, buddy. I think I'm just going to set one and pass. Go ahead. Hey, man, I'd love to see it. I'll draw for turn. No problem. Stand by me. You know what? I'm not sure if I can kill you this turn, so I'm going to feel pretty okay. Eh, we'll do I feel like you can do a lot of damage this turn at the very least, yeah, and that's what I'm scared of. It's hard. To, we'll see how this goes here. I'll start my turn. Since you don't have a monster, I'm going to normal summon 003, and I'm going to trigger 003. Okay. Off of my 003, I'm going to pick up 002, and I'm going to trigger 002. Okay. okay off of double 002, I'll pick up a 005. I'll activate one for one, and I'll Ooh. pitch this 004 for my hand. I'll pick up, I'll pick up Mr. Bulb. I'm gonna activate Pot of Greed. Jeez, yeah, your hand was loaded. Oh it my was God. it was above average, I'd say. It's even better. I'm gonna activate Machine Duplication on 002. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up another 02 and another 02, and I'm gonna trigger both 02s. So I'm gonna pick up six, and I'm gonna pick up another five. Got a few cards. Eh, more than one, you know. Plus four on a machine dude. That's pretty it's, good. It's all right. It's above average, I'd say. All right. Uh, I will synchro 
for a hot eight. Ooh, okay. I'm going to bring out Stardust Dragon. That's pretty good. Yep. All right, I'm going to scale five, scale six. And I'll pend one out, but the one's going to be a really good one, I think, in a minute here. I'm going to activate your chicken game. I'm going to draw a card. Okay. All right, I've got a scale one through ten, which is pretty nice. I will pendulum okay. summon out my O5. You know what? For good measure, I'll bring out the O4 as well. I'm going to trigger O5. I'm going to pop that chicken game. Yep, had a feeling that was coming. Uh, I'm going to activate glow up bulb. I'm going to mill card. Bring back Mr. Bulb. I am going to synchro for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring Leo back. He's back. He's back and bigger and badder than ever. I'll go battle. Sure. Twenty-five, thirty-one. I'll take it all. Main two. I will set a card and best of luck to you, Dolan. <laughs> That's a yeah. I, I mean, love a you field, know, man. Oh, I felt like okay initially, and it'll make more sense probably when the game is over. But your hand was cracked yeah, dude, whether you were going first or very second. Good, so bro. very above average. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and fire off another chicken game. Sure. Why not? <laughs> now this is a bit precarious because uh, I could go down to four hundred. Could go down to four hundred. I don't know if I want to go down to four hundred. <laughs> I may not have a choice. You do have to pop this if you want to kill me, which is nice. Uh, you don't have a five in grade. Got one in extra deck, five dude. in the pen. Yeah. Yeah. So like, unless I can crack the scales, then that's not going to go too well. All right. Uh, we'll pay it. Sure. I'll draw. Yep. Uh, not looking good, Gage. Not looking good. Oh, I was so close. I think you've got this. Oh, come on. Play it out, though. Let me live I'm a little gonna, bit. I'm, gonna, I'm thinking the best. Ooh. Like, I've got two different ways to do this, but I think both of them just result in... If it wasn't for the fact you could pen summon back the 005, I think I'd actually maybe be able to stabilize, but that is what's throwing a it's wrench It's nice, because that's like my... You got to think, that's my first good spell trap <sighs> removal in fucking forever. Right? Bro. Like, right. It's I know. so it, good. It's, it's like insane. Yeah. I'm going to fire Dark Hole. This is the other problem. You have yep, Stardust. I'm if you didn't have Stardust, I would also be able to stabilize here. Stardust. And Stardust is what's complicating things. Uh, so I'll go ahead and scale Veteran. Sure. And I'll scale Cavalier. Actually, I'll scale Gallant, actually. Sure, that's fine. Uh, activate to pop. Sure. Pop these two idiots. And we will grab ourselves... Yeah, we'll go for a veteran here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and scale up again. Yep. Anything on res? Mm, no, I don't think so. So then I will pen summon two. So we'll bring back the gallant and we will bring back the veteran. I will 100% clean up the game from here, champion. Yeah, I mean, it, that that just sealed it anyway. Yep. Okay, so let me let me go ahead and discuss my plan and how it almost came to greatness. Okay. So I had Tyrant Throws what the fuck is this card? in my deck. You tribute two normal monsters, and neither player can normal or special summon effect monsters okay. while this card is face up. All right. So I needed three Ignites and this to be able to do this on turn one. And my opening hand was two of this idiotic yeah. card, the Dark Hole and two Ignites. No. And then the, I don't know, I think I had Chicken Game too, and I think Chicken Game drew me into uh, another one of the Tyrant's throws or something. That's depressing. So, yeah, so I if I would have set this up turn one, you were just 100% fine. Oh, yeah. Because then my it out was just going Twister. to ruin. I have Twister, that's it. Ba basically, Twister, or some way that, oh, no, you can't even special summon five. Yeah. yeah. So you literally would have needed Twister or some other just weird card that you played out this. And that's why I took the risk going first. I didn't feel as bad when I saw your hand that I opted to go first, because going second was my game plan from the get-go. Your hand was going to be fucking crazy. Like, I basically let you go first except with a battle phase. Mm -hmm. And I don't even think if I was drawing to six, I would have been able to beat this mm -hmm. because this was just unbelievable, your opening. Mm -hmm. Because you had Pot of Greed, one for one, Machine Dupe, and the Oppression on top of it. I gave you a card with Chicken Game, but I think you were going to be fine regardless. At the very least, you were going to probably set up Leo Stardust Dragon. Yeah, that was just going to be too much. Damn, dude, yeah. good game. Good games, This man. was a hell of an episode. Oh, yeah, oh no, dude. I, I, I knew as soon as we got 06, I was like, it's game time, baby. Because like that's when you could get both of the scales and you can start pendulum things and then stuff gets just yep. it gets silly bro with three reasoning two reasonings popping in this yep. deck uh even with painful choice band it's just like this deck is still good i can play redox and redox is like literally monster reborn that's good it's like yeah. everything this deck just had everything going for it and i just felt like it was the best choice i thought ignites were up there too ignites were interesting did you have any of the uh the good ones any of the hollow ones i have like one or two of the hollow ones i forget which ones they are to be honest but i have a total of 15 ignites okay 
because we got more in this set. So I figured like 15 plus three uh, Ignition Phoenix on top of it, that's almost like a, getting another Ignite because basically Ignition Phoenix is a plus one because you pop an Ignite and get an Ignite to your hand. So it puts it in the extra monster zone, or uh, excuse me, the extra deck. So it's like you go plus as long as you Pendulum Summon it back out. Mm -hmm. uh, plus the three Terraforming. And then I just played like Chicken Game and stuff just to draw a bunch of cards so I could just see a bunch of Ignites. Uh, the plan was just like basically how I wrote it up game one, where I just draw a handful of cards and just Pendulum Summon out and just blow you out that way. Do you have pseudo space? And then this, I didn't play pseudo space. No, I, I didn't go that deep, but I, this tyrant's throws card is actually a rare and I pulled three of it. And there was nice. an Ignite <laughs> deck around this time uh, on uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! top decks that did like top a regional and this was like part of its game plan. So I'm like, well, if it's good enough to top a regional, it's good enough for progression series. Maybe, I guess. Yeah, I so guess. That's, why that's I one way to look at it. Yeah. It didn't come to fruition, unfortunately. Uh, the other part of the deck you did see, I was playing a little Magic Specter engine. So I sided in a bunch of traps. I sided in like, I wasn't playing any traps from the onset. And then I brought in like Torrential, Vanities. I also sided in Tempest yep. because I was playing QB. So if I did manage to get QB in my pendulum summon, that was a searchable interruption just to be able to stop you. That was the plan with that, but obviously I didn't see it, so I didn't have any way to interact with you whatsoever. Uh, did you have any which is Kirins or Bambuku? You pull any of the good match specters? Did I pull Kirins? Oh my fucking I god! I pulled a whole <laughs> play set of Kirins. Holy hell, dude! That's a lot of Which Kirins. is why I opted to go for this strategy, because Ignites don't care about uh, using out of archetype pendulum cards, mm -hmm. and they just have the scales two to seven to be able to facilitate yep. not just Kieran, but even like QB and stuff as well. So as soon as I saw three Kieran, I'm like, Kieran is a disaster yes. for you to deal yes. with. And so I figured the best shell to play Kieran in is this deck. And uh, may, I don't know if that's correct. It may not be for at least what I have, or at least what I was able to ascertain. That's why I went this route. I just never saw Kieran mm -hmm. and I don't have a way to search it. I didn't get any Bumbuku mm -hmm. or anything, but uh, that's why I figured the chicken games and kind of the deep draw stuff can help get to it. Yeah, it just, it just didn't really play out. I've got some interesting looks with some Magic Specters too. I also pulled like the basic stuff, but I actually ended up getting two Nekomata and I, Ooh, yeah, okay. and I, I but take a deep breath. I only have one Kieran, so it's not that. Bro. Oh, thank yeah, God. It's not thank that. Well, it's, it's bad though, because Kieran's always going to be available in our format, yeah. right? Because we are playing traditional. Yep. So one is all you need for the long term. But for the time being, playing three of this seems pretty good. I also want to play this deck because I knew Breakers of Shadows coming out next episode and we get Twin Twister. Yep. And I feel like Twin Twister makes this deck like significantly worse yep. if we pull it. There's also a guaranteed super rare in every pack mm -hmm. starting at Breakers of Shadow. So Twin Twister is actually a lot more likely to get pulled than other super rares. And so, you know, you're limited, you're limited on spell and trap removal. And so I was just thinking like, man, this is be a really good time to bust this out. It was cool, but you're right. Going, uh, my biggest fear was you making me go first. And uh, I actually didn't think you were going to. I thought you might want to set up because I saw you have so much synchro capability with your guys. Maybe you'd want to set up like a Stardust Dragon and stuff like that. Uh, turn one unopposed. So I actually didn't side into the traps game too when you did make me go first. And I think that was a mistake. The only on interesting my, but that everything I. Everything I drew, I wouldn't have cited out anyway, uh, so I didn't feel that bad that I didn't do it. Yeah, the thing is, is I, I was doing a lot of thinking about it. And after playing this match, I actually feel like I've barely even scratched the surface of this deck. I feel like there's a lot I learned from sure. it, too. Like, the thing is, is uh, sure. my synchro plays are very limited. I probably shouldn't be giving you this key information, but I like you enough. But my synchro <laughs> plays are very limited, turn one. Uh, I feel like the whole deck kind of revolves around getting double 4 Like, when you saw I got 4 in game two, it, yeah. it changed the game. 4 is so nasty, it's unbelievable. It gets everything yep. set up. And then, like, uh, the, the what is it? The limit reverses with the 05s and 06s is crazy, too. That really gets nasty. Your mistake maybe was you should have went second. And I also think you should be playing pseudo space if you're playing chicken game. Because if you chicken game and you attack with one of your guys, if you could OTK, chicken game keeps me alive. But if you had pseudo space, sure. you could just pseudo space over it. Then again, you also so have my your ignite logic, field spell, yeah. Right, exactly. I'm playing three terraforming and three of the ignite field spell yeah. as well. So I would basically sequence it that I would use the phoenix over the chicken game if I needed to go for game. Otherwise, I would just find a way to stall out at that mm -hmm. point. But I do also think a big misplay on my part was calling three off the reasoning with Despot. I think so I too. think that's just my inexperience with the matchup. I didn't realize four was that good. I also didn't know you had machine dupe, but to be fair, if I called four, then machine dupe, you would have been able to use it on any of the desk spots but i think in that particular board state four was like the absolute worst case scenario and since this is like literally the first time i've ever played against desk bots in my life i didn't know that like that's like what four could do and so had i thought about it i would have gone through all the scenarios in my head of like okay now that i know what each desk but i know what one does because we know it from like actual Yu-Gi-Oh. but like two three five six like 
that's fine. Mm -hmm. But four was like the absolute like worst case scenario. And so I should have a hundred percent called that in retrospect. I think it, but it, again, it, here's, I didn't know. And I think that worked to your advantage playing a deck that I just wasn't familiar with. You'll, you'll figure it out, but cause I'm sure you always research these matches after you'll figure it out. Uh, the best number to call is probably, um, number four, like you said, cause everything from one, two, five, and six, they're all really good to get on the board because they all trigger. So yep. uh, the thing is, is like, it, it really doesn't matter which number you pick. I'm most likely going to get something nice off of it. That's the whole point. Reasoning sure. is really cracked at three in this deck too because there's like no clear choice that makes sense. Any other good pulls? Um, I got the Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend. I did too. Was yours a ghost? Yes, sir. <laughs> typical, typical <laughs> progression course. series fashion. Okay, I don't understand this. I think Scarlet... And I think Kali Yuga were the only two hollows I pulled I got in Kali the entire Yuga set. Too, bro. I got Kali Yuga. Really? Well. <laughs> yeah. But the other 22 packs I had, I kid you not, were all rares and no That's hollows. genuinely I, depressing. I, unless I miss something, I don't know how. That's very depressing. But my astral pack luck was a bit of a different uh, story. No. -uh. Okay. I, I know this astral pack's insane, dude. There's Trish, MST, Fiendish Chain. What did you get? What? Which one do you think I got? I think you, I I think you got the MST. I did get an MST. Oh, gauge. man, dude. MST is so yep. good. Yo. Oh, man. <laughs> I also got an ultimate rare off mine. Do you want to guess which one I got? You got the Fiendish Yeah, chain. I got the fucking Fiendish chain. <laughs> I did, too. No, what the fuck? You got both? <laughs> You're cheating. That's unbelievable. No, I, I even said it, too. I'm like, people are going to think this is fake. So, literally, I think I got Fiendish Chain first. It was the first pack. And I'm like, okay, well, I got a Fiendish Chain, whatever. And then the second pack, legit, was the MST. Oh, and I lose man. my shit. And I'm like, people are going to think this is fucking fake. And it's funny, because last episode, I got the double spell shattering arrow on top yep. of it. So, I don't know what is with the pack opener lately. But, you know, I'm not complaining. Two Fiendish Chains now, the first copy of MST to enter the progression. Series. I don't know how good it is, but I mean, it's, it's probably it's pretty MST, good. Bro. Let's be it's honest. It's MST. Yeah, it's, it's timeless. <laughs> against this oppression, it would have done. It would have done a pretty good yep. job, but. I mean, we'll have to see. I, I didn't make root. I think I was citing the MST because I was playing Twisters and MST in case you were playing like Emptiness Oppression and then also your Limit Reverses. That would be a good mm -hmm. thing to pop with uh, with those cards. But uh, I wasn't playing the Fiendish Chains because uh, Pendulum, it's it's hard to play like a ton yeah. of traps, as you know. Yeah. So, I sided my Fiendish yeah. Chains and it's a good thing I sided them because uh, I can't target normal monsters with Fiendish Chains. So. <laughs> I mean, there's a couple effect. Oh, well, no, the Magic Spectres, you can't target yeah, you can't either. Target the Magic Spectres either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing too is with me opting to go first is that I figured if I let you go first you probably cited in a lot of hate for my deck such as oppression and the like and I figured if that's the case if I'm not able to break through you playing uh you know a twister fairy wind like any of the spell and trap destruction that's at common that we have available or even something like oppression or emptiness you getting that first opportunity to set up I feel like is just like really bad mm -hmm. and so that's another reason why I picked to go first aside from the title Tyrant's throws plan. If I didn't have this, I probably would have gone second and I would have just sided in like all of the spell and trap removal I had just to be able to clear it. Mm -hmm. But I figured this may be a little bit better because maybe you would have missed sided and, uh, you know, yeah, but no, it is I what did, it is. I I'm did. happy for you, buddy. You broke the win streak. So uh, Team Gage is going to be reveling in this one for a oh, while. Oh, yeah, they'll be loving it. I did side for you uh, going first. I assume you'd make me go first because I thought you maybe just wanted to OTK again because you saw my first. Exactly. My, my game one turn one board was literally just three pass. Like, I got lucky and I opened like some insane sinker plays. But, like, yeah, if I stick a Leo plus oppression, there's no way you're coming through with it. So, exactly. Exactly. And Leo's just a nightmare he's to deal big, with in a format, bro, he's actually. Big. Yeah, well, Ed, the fact you can't target him, yeah. like, it's there's only a few ways I actually have to deal with this card. And uh, the Ignites kind of cap out at like 24, 2700 attack, I think. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, even going to the extra deck, I think I may only have like one card that can kill this. So, that's another reason I figured just to keep you off Leo, this or like emptiness or even like torrential could kill mm -hmm. it too but uh not with stardust dragon it can't nope. that was a uh, kind of a good uh good combo you got there all right i'm gonna send you back to the drawing board bud you better think of something better to beat these despots man yeah i guess so i guess so it's cool though that we both play pendulum decks right before yeah Breakers right, of Shadow, yeah, right. <laughs> so guys that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of the Yu-Gi-Oh progression series team gauge you'll get to celebrate for a week but breakers of shadows up next and that set is going to change a lot depending on the polls i guess you could say that for every episode but breakers of shadow especially is just one of those sets that has a lot of really good cards. We'll have to tune in next time to see what happens. We have to shout out our patrons as always, though. So big shout out to Shadow1317, Shotagonist, Sean Alling Jr., Cameron Smith, Joshua Schley, and Gayoko, Tim00x3, Eka Ironfang, Pony Stark, Ian Musa, Michael Dente, Dan
Man the Man Hoban, Part 2, Synchro Guy, Mystic Walk, Sylvia Wild, Inuna Taisho, Draconic, Dolly Wop, Dragon Lord, Jarvis Martin, Logan Thomas, Peter Gregory, Thomas Nelson, Jordan Coons, Calvin Iron Bladesman, Pure Ace, Jesse Wood, True Nerdgasm, Cole T, Benjamin Fuller, Brother Paul, Chris Hood, Lumpy, Nehru Celeste, Shane Reese, We Don't Read Our Cards, You Don't Know How True That Is, David Lee, Rockley 325, Lane Rogers, Silent Agent 216, Brett Havy, I Side in Gren Maju and Salad, Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, Garthox, DOW, John Two Base, Apathy the Astro, Brody Eastwood, Flannel Daddy, and Dace Allen. Thank you all so much for watching the video, and we'll see you in Breakers of Shadow.